Hey everyone, this is Nick Bates here, ready to show you guys a tip on Tuesday. So, I uh, figured we got a lot of feedback from um, the Indie Alarms module, so I figured I'd show you guys how to set up alarm. Alright, we go ahead and right click on our shortcut and we open our file location. And we go to Indie Alarm. Put in your credentials here. All right. So, first icon right here in the upper left corner is how we start a new alarm. So, with starting a new alarm, create a task name. I'm just going to do a CalDo monthly report. All right, we have the Performing with Error Windows Task Scheduler. Then we go to Next, we decide when exactly do we want this report to be run. Do we want it daily, weekly, monthly, one time only, cyclic? So I would say let's do this report monthly. Um, we do want to try to pull this report before people come into the office. That way it's not bogging down your servers or you know something like that. So we go ahead and set it for 4 a.m. And then we can put it at the first of the month or whichever you uh, would like. We then go to next. This is just going to be our filter to choose the criteria for the equipment that you wish to have automatically exported. Um, so we can always just go ahead and grab that. We could even say calibration due uh, within this month. All right, next we can include the report. Uh, so you do have the options to pick from your alarms, your standard reports, and your custom reports. Now that can be found in your print builder. So we'll go ahead and select standard, and let's just do an XLS file, not XLSX. But you can always uh, directly print um, or directly to the screen. Next, we go to our report names and we will just do our due for calibration this month. Over here we do have the printer section, so we can send it to the default printer or printer one through five. Um, that would be set up in your user location settings. Down here we have the report options based on alarm filter. So you can always include the report regardless of alarm filter results, or you can only include the report if the alarm filter locates equipment. Next, uh, we can include uh, email addresses. So this is gonna be your email distro, your email distribution. Uh, we can simply type in those addresses manually and add a semicolon for multiple addresses. Uh, so you just type in an address, semicolon, the next address. Or if we hit these three dots, um, we can go ahead and add um, an employee um, from uh, this section. So if I double click, I can pick and choose the individuals that I'd like to be on that report or on that email distribution. Next, um, we do have a way to uh, separate the email notifications based on a breakdown. So I will get to that in just one second. Um, but the other topic I want to talk about is saving to a file. So if your company has a specific drive, a specific location where your employees access information, um, you could always save this report down in that folder and then they could access that folder uh, when they would like to. So back up to the top, we'll do send separate email notifications based on something. So we can do no breakdown, or if we hit this drop down list, um, we can do a number of different breakdowns. So what a breakdown is, is if I have a calibration due monthly with multiple departments on that list, if I select um, that I'm going to break it down by department, then that means each department is only going to get an email with the equipment that belongs to that department. All right, so in your add edit list, you will go to your department section, you'll double click on departments, and you will add the email addresses for your department. All right, we then hit next, and you can save to the file location if you would like for out of inventory templates. 
We then hit next. And then here we have your select email distribution rules. So before we selected uh, the breakdown, now we are gonna determine um, who that gets sent to and how it gets sent. So we come in here and let me just stretch this out for you. We first um, go ahead and set up our rule name so we know uh, exactly what we're doing here. And then we figure out what the subject line would be uh, for these emails. So maybe the subject line would just be something like Cal do monthly report. Then we can create a body um, for the email message. So if you would like, uh, you can type up, uh, you know, whatever you would like to employ, uh, to email the department head. And then over here, we do have some database driven fields um, that will pull in the department name um, so that that can be uh, very specific to the individuals you're reaching out to. So figure out what the body of your email message would be. And then we can come down here and do a number of options. Because we are doing a department breakdown, um, we would really like to do, uh, to really like to select either one email address of the department that you would like to send, or you have the option of, of adding in your ad edit list up to five emails for one department. So if you have a quality person, if you have a department head, if you have other employees that you would like to receive these emails, um, feel free to enter in all five of those email addresses and then you would select uh, department emails one through five. Now, if you were gonna do a different type of breakdown, you could always do specific email addresses, specific employees, an employee group that acts as kind of a distro um, and you would set that up under employees in the ad edit list. So we'll go ahead and leave department emails one through five and hit OK. Next, this is the option to select any equipment or lab status fields that should be set after alarm is run. So after this alarm is run, if you wanted it to activate all the equipment that it grabbed or deactivate all the equipment that it grabbed, um, that's up to you. If you have the black uh, square within here, it will do nothing. After we're done with that, we go ahead and we hit finish, and then it added the alarm to this section. Now, before that alarm will fire, we need to make sure that we click on your user location settings. So we have a little quick shortcut here to your user location settings. And so if we go on into email settings, we really want to make sure that we have um, our email settings set up. So, you know, you would do something like this. You guys may have an SMTP server um, that is set up by your IT department or something like that. Um, but we highly recommend that you use SMTP uh, for the alarms module, um, but you can use Outlook um, selecting this extended mappy section. All right, so once your IT or whomever fills this, uh, these items out and you are certain and you can, that you can send emails through IndieSoft, we go ahead and we save and close that. Now we take this task, uh, so to speak, and we go to this icon right here um, to update the Windows Task Scheduler with all active alarms. So we want your Task Scheduler um, to have these tasks on them. Um, if you want to test this alarm to see if it's working before waiting for uh, the scheduled time, we can go ahead and execute that right now. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first check uh, that this is updated. We'll hit yes with my task scheduler. And then we're gonna go over to launch Windows task scheduler. So we're gonna wanna launch the task scheduler to see um, if we have my task on there. So we go to our IndieSoft folder and we can see right here um, that I have one set for 4 a.m. Um, on day one. Okay, so um, this is the task right here, and it's set to run. So we're going to want to close out of that. And we can always hit execute uh, to go ahead and see that alarms report. 
and see whatever else. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. Um, if you have any issues, please reach out to support at indiesouth.com and please have a wonderful 4th of July. Thank you.